Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got an awesome video for you today because we are going to be checking out this bad boy here, which is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo White. So it is a full white heatsink cooler and it has RGB lighting included as well. So how much is this going to cost? Well, it is retailing right now for around $45 to $50, which means that it is going up against some stiff competition and we are going to be checking out that stiff competition in comparison with this cooler in the video today. So stick around if you wanna see how this cooler does and if it's worth your cash. And then we're gonna be doing a system build at the end into one of my favorite cases, the Cooler Master NR200P Mini ITX, of course, and we are gonna be using the fabulous Cooler Master V850 SFX power supply. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. First though, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22.09 down to just $16.57, and in the UK, you'll see the price fall to just £12.79. Once you've paid, head over to your order page, click the get key button, and copy your Windows key code. When you're in Windows, you wanna move your mouse over to the start button, right click, go to settings, then update and security, and then move up to activation. And finally, click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT 25, click apply, and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring today's video. Before we get cracking on the rest of the video though, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you are notified when I upload new videos because I've got a load of cool stuff including giveaways and all sorts of things coming up in the very near future here on Crazy Tech Lab. And don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. It means a lot to have your support and it just means that I can continue doing these videos and doing them more regularly as well because it punches me up the algorithm. So don't forget to hit that like button, the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and don't forget to leave a comment below as well. Are you considering the Hyper 212 Halo for your next build, maybe in an ITX system or ATX system? What cooler do you have at the moment that you'll be replacing? Love hearing about uh, what you guys are doing out there with your own systems in the comments below, so don't forget to do that. In terms of specifications and features, we have RGB lighting in the form of a Halo 2 fan with dual loop RGB rings around the fan frame and these are controlled by your typical RGB three pin connector that you will need to connect to your motherboard or to a third party RGB connector. You have four heat pipes that are in direct contact with the CPU and in terms of CPU and socket support we have both socket AM5 and Intel LGA 1700 support out of the box. So Intel's 12th and 13th gen CPUs and AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs are both supported out of the box with no adapter kits required. And obviously previous recent sockets of both those companies are supported as well. And uh, the only omission there is Intel's LGA 2066 socket. So that's not supported. It's only its mainstream sockets. Uh, mainstream desktop going back to LGA 1156. So as long as you're 1156 or newer, so LGA 1700, 1200, 1151, and all that kind of stuff, AMD, socket AM5 or AM4, then you are good. In terms of the dimensions of the heatsink, it's pretty compact. It only sits at 154 millimeters tall, which is well within the limits of most tower heatsink supporting cases. So we're gonna be putting it into a Cooler Master NR200P, but most ATX cases, if they support full towers or full tower coolers, should I say, they will have typically 160 millimeters of clearance or more. So there should be plenty of clearance in any case that supports a tower cooler for the most part. So we've already spoken about the, uh, the heat pipes, the uh, dimensions in terms of depth and width. We've got a width of 124 millimeters and a depth with the fan installed of 73 millimeters. So it's a pretty compact cooler. The fan itself 
has a peak RT RPM of uh, 2050 RPM. So we're going to be taking some noise readings for this fan to see how it compares. Now, in terms of comparisons, we are going to be putting it up against the Noctua U12S Redux. So that is a similarly priced fan that costs around $50 and the Cooler Master cooler that we've got here today retails for around $48 on Amazon right now and you can see the links to both of those coolers and some others that I recommend in the description below as well so don't forget to check those links out. That's it for this part of the video though so let's crack on with the testing and we will come to some conclusions at the end. First up, and we should probably talk about my test system, which includes a Core i5-12600K, which has six performance cores and four E-cores, so 10 cores in total. This CPU was running at stock speed, and to measure the actual temperatures, I used core temp, and to load the CPU, I used the 10-minute burning test on Cinebench. The temperatures recorded were an average reading across all of the performance cores on the 12600K. So the cooler that we are comparing, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo White against today is the Noctua U12S Redux. And uh, this is kind of a mid-range Noctua cooler, it costs around $50, includes the Redux fan, 120 uh, millimeter fan, rather than one of the more premium Noctua models. I think this model costs around 10 or $15, so it's significantly cheaper than some of Noctua's premium fans. Um, but we are using this cooler because A, it costs about the same, B, it includes a similar specification in terms of size and heat pipes and fans that are included, obviously just one. Um, so we, I thought that it was a, a pretty good comparison given the price and uh, a very, very similar spec cooler. So to start with then, we've got a CPU temperature of 82 degrees uh, with the same ambient temperature with the Cooler Master Hyper 2 and 2 Halo um, versus 76 degrees with the Noctua U12S Redux. So 82 degrees for the Cooler Master and 76 for the Noctua. So Noctua obviously outperforming the Cooler Master cooler here fairly significantly, but we are only talking about six degrees. So the benefit of the Cooler Master cooler though is that its fan was significantly quieter. Now that's actually quite surprising because it actually spins about 300 RPM faster than the Redux fan included with the Noctua cooler. That's rated at about 1700 RPM, whereas the Hyper cooler is um, rated at just over 2000. So not just the decibels though, the noise quality was significantly better with the Cooler Master cooler as well. There was a just a faint sort of airflow noise, a white noise, which was pretty pleasant to sit next to, even at full speed, uh, for 10 minutes in the Cinebench uh, uh, throttling and stress test that I used to uh, to test the both coolers. Now, the Noctua fan, on the other hand, was much noisier, much noisier, but also had much poorer noise quality. So there was a definite tone to that noise and kind of a low thrumming noise, which was gen generally much less pleasant to sit next to at full speed than the Cooler Master fans. So that's kind of a swings and roundabouts thing here. You get more performance from the Noctua cooler, but with much worse noise levels and much worse noise quality as well. So for me, if I was going to buy one of these coolers, now I love my cooling and I love my efficiency, but I also, um, I'm very, very sensitive to noise especially no low noise quality and i don't think if i was running this running my cpu you know in an overclock state or in games where it was potentially ramping up to um, medium to high speeds all the time i don't think i would want to sit next to the noctua u12s redux all the time i would much much rather take a small hit on the thermals and have the cooler master hyper uh, 212 halo white instead so they're both similarly priced and for me, the Cooler Master just wins out on that noise quality and lower noise levels. So for me, it's a definite win here for the Hyper 212 Halo White. The obvious, the obvious um, issue here would be ramping up to a more powerful CPU, because obviously a 12600K is, is kind of def in mid-range territory for an LGA 1700 CPU. You've obviously got the 12700K, 12900K, you've got the 13700K, you've got 13900K and various S models above that as well. So there are going to be higher heat loads than what the Cooler Master Cooler is dealing with here. So that would be my only concern, um, I think, is 
just dealing with that extra heat from a really, really high-end CPU. But if you're dealing with a mid-range CPU, perhaps even up to a 13700K or 12700K, then I think I would still be opting for the Hyper 212 Halo White. So what do we make of Cooler Master's Hyper 212 Halo White Edition then? Well, I am pretty sold on the white edition of this fan. There is a black one available as well, but the RGB lighting just really, really pops with the white edition, as you can see in the NR200P that we've built it into at the moment. So other things to consider, though, are the performance the noise levels and the price. So starting with the price is pretty reasonable for a high quality 120 millimeter cooler with excellent RGB lighting and a white color scheme to boot. I think Cooler Master is pretty spot on in terms of the price. Obviously we'd always like to see it cheaper, but I don't think it's too unreasonable at that price range, especially when you consider lots of other similar coolers are retailing for similar prices. For example, Noctua's uh, U12S Redux. Now that Cooler is the one that we uh, compared it against in the graphs and it does beat the Hyper 212 Halo in terms of cooling performance quite noticeably. But the downside for the Noctua cooler is that it has much higher noise levels and far inferior noise quality. So it's just generally unpleasant to sit next to if you are running your PC at full speed or the processor is running at full speed and ramping up the CPU fan as a result. So as I mentioned in my uh, an analysis, I would probably go for this cooler over the Noctua for that reason. Um, also, if you're running a mid-range CPU such as a Core i5-12600K or a 13600K, it offers more than enough cooling to deal with that CPU without any throttling issues as well. And if you're overclocking, for, for example, with a 13600K, you can check out my guide on how to do that very, very quickly and easily in the uh, banner above right now your CPU will actually run cooler once it's overclocked and running faster because we're raining in the CPU voltage, so you'll get even cooler results than we probably did today, albeit that's with a slightly different CPU, the 13600K versus the 12600K that I used to actually test the coolers. So yes, you will see better performance out there, but in terms of noise levels and noise quality, the Hyper 212 Halo White is hard to beat. Now, in terms of aesthetics, I think you'll look. I think you'll agree it looks pretty awesome as well. So performance, not amazing, but still very, very acceptable. Noise quality and noise levels, absolutely fantastic. Price, pretty much spot on. And that's pretty much all we need to say about it here today. I think I'm looking forward to using this in a few builds uh, coming up and uh, we're going to check it out in some other cases as well. And I think you'll, look, you'll agree it looks absolutely fantastic in the Cooler Master NR200P as well. Also, don't forget that I used today the Cooler Master V8 50 SFX power supply that fitted very nicely into the Cooler Master NR200P that we've got here. I can highly recommend using that power supply and this cooler and this case in a combination and I can list some other bits as well. The motherboard that I've used today is from MSI. It is the B760i Edge Wi-Fi. So all of these components are listed in the description below. So don't forget to check out the description below for all the buy links if you want to check out any of this hardware. So I'd like to thank Cooler Master for sending over all the goodies today and uh, especially to uh, MSI also for sending over the motherboard and we'll be back very, very soon with some more reviews and lots of fun content. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, turn on those notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.